says he's just behind that with snow day tomorrow. Couldn't talk about in front of Allie or something? <laughs> what is, it, right? is that what you're implying? No, uh, yeah, who knows about tomorrow? This reminds me of January. Well, when? But, it does look like January. It's weird for September. Uh, I'm not used to this in September. A lot of people were telling me, oh, it does snow in September all the time. My, I've been here for only two years, but it always started in October. Before. I don't remember it ever snowing. I remember it snowing at the end of October. Never before. Yeah. There. I'm yeah, really like, oh, it's getting cold. Yeah, it's getting right. cold. That's all I remember. Is, hey, it's what's cold every year now. So this is freakish, yeah. But whatever. It, I, it seems like I what at least a two hour delay tomorrow. And I don't know if teachers are, t- are telling you, but like we're gonna just add everyone into the Microsoft Teams. And if we do have a study tomorrow, that can be the day y'all figure out Microsoft Teams, um, which is really pretty self-explanatory, and it'd be a good idea to get on it anyway. Um, Okay, so y'all did pretty good. Let me make it to where Ben can come straight in. He's late. He's usually never late. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, like with McKinley, like uh, if you're doing the retake, um, it's going to be the same quiz, and here are the answers. So there's almost no way you can fail this retake. But I need you to understand the corrections you're going to make. So, oh wait, this isn't yours. This is y'all's quiz, right? No, this is yours. Um, this is a weird sentence. I should have maybe picked another one, but. Uh, it, it did really get y'all to uh, work with some funky sounding technical grammar. Um, so we had future active participles with El Crestori and Rocktori. Future active. So if y'all need to review the four different types of participles, that's just like the first page of uh, chapter 23. It would not be a bad idea for all of us uh, to do that. And then the future active participles both have their own direct object. And then the main clause is everything after all names. And that's they began, yeah, they began to pursue and so destroy all men of great honesty. Oh, you actually got the color palette right. And mm-hmm. the thing did. Wait, how? Yeah, it's, Wait. it's correct this time. Oh, maybe that's because I, I don't know why that happened. Yeah, maybe, it's correct. Well, it's because this is a fresh PowerPoint for like reviewing. So maybe just because I something about the, the overall like, PowerPoint that it's on that affects it. It's like if you have too many slides, you can kind of pour the stuff together and you can color it. It's <laughs> getting muddy. Now, yeah. So something about like when I showed my PowerPoint template. Anyway, any questions about that? What else do I ask besides uh, um, those two questions about the like, part of the right. Oh, that's it. That's it. So those retract. Uh, yep. Um, so. If y'all even, oh, back to the muted colors. Can you go back to the first uh, one? Yep. Thank you. So, um, let's see what can I say. Uh, oh, if y'all at least know that voice means active and passive, that's the, more than some eighth graders can say right now. They were both active. You tricked us. <laughs> yeah. You said it was adaptable and passive. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, that is not the case for participles. Participles, they're still half the time going to be half because you got future active or present. So, okay, all right. Have you added transformer to your uh, your uh, deprivation oh. parlet yet? Yeah, there, yeah, no. the transformer for Yeah, yeah okay. Sure. No, I don't, I don't care at all about trans. There's some YouTubers I like who, who like, they're really smart and for some reason they like take a uh, critical lens to transformers, which is kind of hilarious. But like, I don't get. Transformers or any hyper transformers like that is a steaming pile of garbage. That that franchise. Well, we um, can add a bunch of but instead of having plans, really we like can just it, replace it's all. A cool idea. I mean, no, it is. I don't, I don't just, like it. I just think it's a cool idea. It no, it, it, it's fine. I mean, it's just as fine as Marvel. I don't know why I'm choosing to be grumpy about Transformers instead of like Marvel. And then this well, one. Um, oh, yeah. 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 This one's fun. I really like this sentence. Um, I mean, I think I mostly got the translation pretty good. Know that omnes is an accusative object of anti, arca is an ablative uh, place from where, and then what else? We have uh, uh, currents. Currents is a present active participle. So yeah, Jack's right. Now I realize I need to stop saying that thing about the absolute passive. Yeah, because I just like automatic on that question. I, I just automatically wrote that passive. Wait, no, that's present active, and then I'll just. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's how it used to be when I asked mood or something, and it's like, I'm asking the mood, and it's like imperative. That will change as soon as we get subjunctive, which I think is still a ways off. That will shift again. So, um, I mean, this the only new piece of grammar in this is current, uh, the present active current. So, any questions on these? Can we let Allie back in? Um, uh, what about the bonus? 
Oh, the bonus? Let's talk about the bonus. I like completely failed the bonus. Wait, can you go back? Wait, wait. You can't. Yeah, let's do the button bonus. So I don't have it typed up here, but what was that? So I, it's really awkward sounding you know what's correct, but it's because I try to put all uh, types of participles in it. So it's like, uh, um, the student has been taught by Catalanella. I should have added like an extra Catalanella, so there's kind of um, And then what about the student? Uh, they have been taught uh, by Catalanella, loving Latin, the student has been, um, and about to learn the Spanish language. So that's probably, like, I should have glossed that. Hispania was the way they referred to Spain, the ancient Romans. So if you said mm -hmm. Hispanic language, I don't blame you. But it, it'd be better, I guess, it's just the Spanish language. Um, and uh, will, Eric, will soon the box be a good teacher? I know none of you guys are probably trying to be teachers, but I don't know. I was just thinking, like, technically, y'all will soon be at the level where you can teach kids how to speak Spanish language or something. Um, I agree. Agree. So it's weird because there's a present active and future active participle in there. That, that, that middle part's kind of like wacky sounding, but it's technically going to be correct. The student, if you ignore it, has been taught by Mr. Carlo, it's just the student loving Latin and about to learn Spanish. That's what it's supposed to be, but I don't blame y'all for uh, not like nailing that one. Participles just like get us into positions where we're like thinking of the possible sounding. Translaciones. Uh, Look away out. I forgot to suck. All right, and then okay, that's the other option. And then, but I might put that to Ali too. So. Movie. Movie. All right. Yeah. Um, movie. A film produced oh, yeah, within the yeah. cinema. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. How did how did y'all do with thirty fourth uh, declension? Uh, I didn't get started. I didn't get started. Do it. Do it now. Do it now. Okay. I, don't I don't know. I don't want to cut all over the place. I'm giving y'all clues. I'm gonna ask y'all to do this. Uh, Wait. So how are we supposed to do this? Like this one and this one? No, no. Just just put third and fourth on the first. Yeah, you can you can put it there. Oh, okay. If you're a completionist, you can do one or two if you want, like first and second completion, but you don't really need to, right? We all know first and second, right? Right. And then try to do your perfect active endings in the first. Huh? Do you like the third and fourth? I would do third and fourth in the same thing, so you can use the bottom half tomorrow. Um, yeah, uh, there, there's four of them, so we can do this every morning this week. If you realize, like, oh, I don't basically know any third, fourth declension endings, that's okay. Maybe tomorrow you will. Um, I'm doing this for the young kids, and I'm asking them to do first and second. A lot of them are like, oh, I don't know a single one. It's like, ooh, 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 ooh. Well, there are seventh graders, or eighth graders, or right. I haven't done it with the ninth graders yet, but I have to go. But yeah, so um, don't feel bad you're on third and fourth. Most kids don't even know first and second. <laughs> And some kids, some kids are like second or third year, but because of like the weird happenings with the LTA lab department, they're like in the 1.5 class and they like still don't know anything. So I guess it's good that they've, they, it's not like they've been flunked repeatedly. They're just like, I don't know. What we they, need to do is start a Greek class. Right? Yeah, they're learning yeah. Greek. Well, they go back to the sixth grade, they're learning Greek in there. What, why do they get to learn Greek? Because they're not learning Latin this year, so now they're learning a little bit of Latin. Yeah, Greek. Greek. yeah. It's, a, it's a nice little book we have it right here. If You you can borrow these if you want, McKinley. But isn't Greek more complicated than Latin? Well, yeah, because it's an entirely different alphabet. It's entirely different alphabet. Like, look, here, well, then some of them are very recognizable. Oh, so they must not be lion. doing the alphabet. Is that lion? It is. Oh, yeah, that's an alphabet word, isn't it? But they must be putting it into the, the English characters. Ah, that makes sense. Ali, Ali, oh, look no, away. No, no. Ah. Yeah. Weird. Okay. I never thought realized that. They're just like they're taking the English word like hippos it means horse, right? But they're putting it oh pit no no no. Horse mm -hmm. ghosts. Yeah, it means horse. Um they're putting it in the English characters. Huh, I don't know how I feel about that. Ornus. What is Ornus anyone? What's Ornith? Uh, no, wait, not that. Um uh, uh the bird. I had to check to make sure. Bird? bird. Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, we don't only know that because ornithography. Am I making up that word ornithography, the study of birds? No. Yeah, but don't only have a few words from our alphabet. The Amphi. Rest is nonsense to us. What would this be? Amphitheater. What is that? Amphitheater uh, theater? is like a round theater. So what is yeah. amphi? That means round. both. Oh. oh, like amphibian. See, I should know these two. Amphibian, it's land and sea. All right. How are y'all doing? Uh, I don't know any, so. Kelly doesn't know any third and fourth. Uh, 
Um, Looks like Anna knows a good bit of her third, almost all of her third. It looks like, and some of her fourth. Good job on fourth. Fourth is like fine. I don't know. By the end of the week, maybe starting tomorrow, we want to start looking at fifth because y'all two have fifth starting to be right. I can have this. Uh, Wait, do we have fifth? Yeah. Okay. We just like kind of squeezed it that much. Um. So third is. Allie looks like she knows most of third, some of fourth. I'm impressed that y'all even know fourth. I know we have this technically with chapter 23, but it's an opportunity. Oh, it's an opportunity to learn it. I can't remember two of them. They're the easiest ones. Take a couple more seconds, and then I'm going to flip the noun chart. Are How are y'all doing with your perfect endings? Just take a few uh, more seconds. To uh, oh, time. perfect. I forgot about perfect. I want to see if anybody can do perfect real fast. Because um, you and the eighth graders have had perfect tense since chapter 12, and I swear, y'all just y'all get so thrown off by perfect active endings. You guys have a little bit of I don't even think it reflects on y'all. Like, it's so um, across the board that eighth and ninth graders on that third year don't know perfect tense well that it's clearly something I did wrong <laughs> at this point. But so see if y'all know that. You know yours? Yes. Um, I'm a little bit on third floor, is where I'm a little bit. Third floor is weird. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, your second attendant is also being a little more to add a little bit. Oh, 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 my gosh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. And I don't blame you for this, but I don't make sense. Oh, Allie knows most of her perfect endings. And yeah, that sounds All right, we're probably going to get into this, though. Um, oh, oh, yeah. All right, let me add at least with the nouns. I can see for the verb endings, but here are the nouns. Uh, I'm going to type them up and get them all nice on something in the PowerPoint for tomorrow. But orange is third. So as far as I can see, I'll mostly do third. And then maybe not? No, I don't know. I'm following my little two. Okay. So um, we don't really have time for it today, but there are flashcards up here. If you want to like make a third clinching flashcard or something, maybe singular third clinch on one card, or it'll be other. I miss one, two, three, four, five, all together. Uh, for third and fourth all together? I got Yeah, that's not too bad. But I mean, third, it's weird to talk about. It's like, here they are. Remember them. <laughs> like, um, there is some logic to it, though. Instead of the ablative data probe being long IS, it's the civis. Um, oh. We're reminded of second inclusion neuter in the fact that the nominative plural is the same as the accusative plural. That's very much a second inclusion neuter kind of thing. Uh, now, the singular, you don't have to remember anything because it's just it's a little bit a bunch of things. Generative singular, that like shows up in the dictionary entry for third inclusion now, so you should know the generative singular. I think most of y'all know that. Dative, I picture dropping that S off because the data singular is totally different than any of the data that came before it. But like after we get third declension, data singular becomes something we keep seeing, keep seeing these long highs. So that is something you should be able to kind of like logic your way through. Accusative, it ends in M, just like first and second, and third, fourth, all the singular accusatives end in M. Isn't that beautiful? Except that maybe one. Oh. And then ablative is obsessed with single vowels, whether they're long or short. Third is for some reason, the only one that's actually short. And then vocative is here. Uh, vocative. Oh, this wow. is a weird genitive plural, okay? Because it's like a shortened version of arm and orum. So um becomes very bad for us. Ae is the first ending we hate. Um, as soon as we get the neuter um in uh, chapter four, at, like after that, um is just increasingly bad. It, it comes really bad once you get that, and then it just it's, it never recovers. Es for nominative and genitive plural. That feels easy. And then second, I mean, fourth declension, it, it's kind of like third declension where it's just like U is showing up instead of I or E. So it's uh, U.S., so that's normal. That's the second declension kind of thing. The genitive is long U.S., so it has this weird thing going on with the nominative plural and the genitive plural and the accusative plural are long U.S. That's like the weirdest thing about fourth. But if you remember one of those, you're technically remembering at that point like three of the endings. The dative is UI, so it's kind of like third declension dative. Accusative is UM, that makes sense. Alive is long U, that makes sense. Uh, the genitive plural is UUM, that kind of makes sense if we're using third declension genitive plural. And then they get IVIS for their dative nominative plural as well. So, anyway, it's a process. And we'll talk about the green ones maybe starting tomorrow. So, look at the green ones right now. And someone can really blow my mind tomorrow if they're able to write third, fourth, and fifth. Yeah, green is just like. Everything I miss is in plural. Oh, yeah? What well, are because, more repetition? That's because plural. No, I just thought it was so repetitionous that I was like, wait, that can't be right. I'm finally going to fix this. Okay. Uh, the EI. 
Do the natives all end an eye after their third, fourth, fifth? They all get they eyes. Do not have a uh, wood punch with um, pocketed pearls. Oh, do I not? Um, oh, no, it would be along US so I can get it. I don't know, how can you do that? It messes up the whole system. I know, it's on the wrong side of the fifth. But we hate Bakken anyway, so. Well, I, why does everybody hate Bakken? What did they do to the world? I decided, decided. They decided to exist. They decided to exist, okay. Well, like, what if the group just decided not to use the Bakken? They could just say, the non native is either subject or it's an interjection. And yeah. we can all go about our lives and have five cases instead of six. But instead, they insist on this like stupid interjection thing having its own case. Um, oh, you're very right. passionate about vocative. We also used to teach the locative case, but then we decided it's just oh, an accusative yeah. function. It's like Wait, a, there's, there's six cases? There's actually seven. 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 seven cases. But, but we discontinued the locative as, as we, as I'm like, I'm a part of some <laughs> Illuminati of <laughs> teachers who like make decisions. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm part of the ancient Latin. <laughs> like, right. So we put in this thing, but we get rid of Cicero. No more him. Yeah. I'm on the board oh, of wow. Latin Yeah, <laughs> Latin teacher association. Yeah. yeah. The, the justices and that. Just yeah. have a Caesar hat on and right. then you walk around in shadows. Yeah, you have to walk around in toga. Yeah. In toga. You, you need a one year at the location. Or like um, a giant brick building in New York. Yeah, giant right. brick. Or they would More like more like human organs. organs where they harvest <laughs> Right. Yeah, it's very Da Vinci Code. All right. Now we're just going to. So obviously today is all about the perfect. So if you didn't or were able to fill out your chart, we're going to solely fill it by looking at examples of. All six of the perfect active or yeah, perfect. So this might feel weird coming off of participles, like y'all started to learn participles and now we're just looking at perfect. Now we'll look at participles again at the end of class. But what is movi? What is movi? The person number in and start to table it with this Yeah. It is a first person singular perfect. It's first singular perfect. So I think this still continues to I'm, at this point I'm not even talking about y'all, I'm talking about like a little more eighth graders and like sort of y'all. That so you don't have trouble looking at this and realizing it's even a verb, I think. And I don't blame you. I think you look at that and you think of like second convention genitive or second convention nominative plural or something. Because we have not before this had any verbs in and just I. So that's kind of a vocabulary thing. It's part of you being able to look at the first part of the word and being like, well, I know that's coming from a verb. It's not one of our nouns. It's any and I. It is first singular perfect. So I move. Have if you want. You don't need to have have necessarily. Uh, what was I thought of an instance where you do need to have? I think if you're asking a question, yeah, you have do you need to whip out have or has it? You ask that, yeah. Or could you say like ran? <laughs> or like <laughs> no, like it, not really. Like you can't say. Or like you ran. Right. Well, like, I mean, some people do that. Like, like you ran in the race. Yeah, you ran in the race. No, that is fine actually. But like you, you move. No, you move is fine too. Okay, you don't need any questions either. That's it. Okay. Yeah, bad example. But um, so if y'all don't like have or has, don't worry about them, I guess. I think perfect passive participle, you do have to worry about have. Like have been verb. So we're not on passive today. We'll get to passive tomorrow and Thursday. I have loved the day. Um, there's a mini series out right now called Three Jokers. It's all about how uh, there's three jokers. Three jokers. <laughs> this, this whole time there's. <laughs> right. This. <laughs> Apparently, this whole time there's been three jokers in this mini series. We can explore why and how. But how can there be two jokers? There's clearly yeah. only one that actually matters. The others are just birth. Well, that's what it seems like. It, in yeah. in this, the first issue, there's only been one issue out. If y'all want to start reading it, all three jokers are just hanging out talking. So they're all like aware of each other. I thought it was like some weird interdimensional, like multiverse thing where like this is like the Joker who looks kind and, of like, like the, the 60s. Right, yeah. So like there is it the 60s, the. That's what I thought it. They, they all kind of look the same. One wears a Hawaiian shirt. One wears like a classic Joker, like purple, like blazer, and then like the other one I forget what he wears. But they all look, look the same. Like I thought it would be like that. Like here's a '70s looking Joker. Here's like a '90s looking one who looks like Jack Nicholson from the old Batman movies. And here's like the uh, uh, what's his name? Batman. Scary 2008 Joker, like a disco suit and like disco suit. Yeah, disco suits have some out afro hair. That'd be good. Like like the whole sparkly thing. Yeah, that'd be good. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, we've, now we've done enough off topic to talk. So, okay, part of this is like being aware of what the verb dictionary entry is. This is why I think you guys have struggled with the perfect tense, is because your first year of Latin, I would say over and over again, oh, don't worry about the third, fourth, fifth, part of these verbs. I'm not telling that to kids anymore. I'm telling them, like, you don't like need to memorize them, but you should at least lay eyes on them. So, Mobe is a weird one. Mobe is a weird one. 
because this stim, it basically could other like this is second conjugation, so you would never expect an ending like imus or it, like I in US or I T at the end of it. Um, so you're actually not going to accept the present perfect of this verb. But there are some verbs where that could happen. Uh, so anyway, that this is the stem, right? We're using MOV, technically the same stem as these guys, but the E is not around. So that's your first hint that you're in the perfect system, is there's no E. And then immediately or before you even realize that, you should see that it's just ending in long I, so it has to be first singular perfect. So McKinley, if you see a verb, tell it the verb. And it is ending in just long I is what person or number? It's the uh, first perfect. First singular. So I first singular verb. perfect. First singular. So I'll just give you a where sumo be between. What would that be, Alex? Yeah, but the verse are like a line of poetry. Yeah. The, I do not know if ancient Romans use this verb to talk about how we in, in English say that someone has like been moved in an emotional way. I'm not sure, but I'm using it that way. Sounds like a pipe pipe verb. You know, right. he had the song and he kidnapped all the children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, just here, I did trick some of my eighth graders into thinking that was a subject or something. It's like, oh, because we just talked about how this is sort of singular. So this is just neuter, accusative plural. If y'all notice in my bonus questions, uh, I'm always using this second uh, declension accusative neuter ending because I'm not wanting to say like just male students or I think I did just say second declension masculine students. But anyway. I think uh, the snow is finally sticking to the ground. So this is a direct dab, and I don't think so. I think it'll start sticking around four oh, at the okay. end of the day. I don't know, but I can see it on that house. It's clearly some snow on there. So the stipula is a direct dab, and where so would be an ablative of what? So you know, yeah, means here. Yeah, we have no preposition, so this is just how the kids are moved. Uh, miscuimos, miscuimos. What person number would that be, Anna? First person. Yeah, so this one's, I mean, I, I, this one and then like a couple others, it's very obvious what the first person number is. Like if we're just looking at the uh, first person singular, and we've only known the present system before that, we wouldn't know that that's first person singular. This one, we still can apply our old OST muscles to this, you know, first person plural. Uh, what would this mean then? It would mean, me, uh, it would mean we what? Uh, we, we, we will, we will, we mix. Not will. Okay. So that's important, but I'm glad you said that, McKinley. Now, this is perfect tense, so it's just we verb, okay. not will. We don't even need any helping verbs. You might sometimes use the helping verb have or has, but you don't even need them. You just put them into what in English we call simple past. I verb. And that's how imperfect is too. So if I wrote a textbook, I would probably just like keep perfect and imperfect. Like, they're just verb. Don't worry or we about get rid of the perfect and make it like English so we can stop all this nonsense. We made it like, like it's, it's yeah, we still have it. We just call it simple past versus past continuous, which is what we call Latin imperfect. Or maybe we should destroy the English language to learn German. We should. We should. Okay, so imus along, so perfect and plural along with third singular, they're actually kind of identical, except for maybe these macrons, to fourth conjugation verbs in the present tense. So, Visco Viscari is second conjugation, so this doesn't really apply to this one. But what consonant or vowel, actually, sorry, what letter, let's just say letter, tells mm -hmm. us for sure this is perfect system? And we're ignoring the ending, Jack. Um, the Yeah, it is the U, actually. Because if we look at the third principal part, that's where the perfect tense comes from, we drop off the long I to get the perfect stem. So it's miscu. So, and that's actually, that happens a lot. A lot of these perfect stems end in U, X, or B. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. Uh, so you is a valid English, but it's I think so. Um, uh, so these letters will often end our perfect stems. Um, yeah, because we don't see the U in the first two principal parts, right? So just simply by seeing the U, you know it's one of the perfect tenses. And I'm not seeing the ERA, so it's not the perfect. I'm saying ERI, not the future perfect. It's just perfect. What would Turbo Miscalia must be? By the way, guys, I do have vocab refresher sheets if you want them. Totally up to you. They're mostly for younger kids because younger kids have a trouble like keeping like notes and like a log of words they don't know. I'm not going to pick them up this year, but if y'all like the way it organizes the words you don't know that you encounter, you should pick them up. Um, McKinley, I know you kind of have trouble with that first vocab quiz. Or, yeah, so it wouldn't be a bad idea I think, for you to grab them. What is turbo miscellaneous? 
I'm, I'm, I said that because I don't know if y'all know what turbo is. Everyone knows what turbo is. What is turbo turbine? Is it related to turbulence in any way? I or? think it is in a kind of weird way. That doesn't really help us turn a little bit. Okay. So, turbo turbine first extension. It means like crowd, but not any crowd. It's kind of like a virus crowd. Like oh, it's so a mob. Yeah, it's a mob. It can mean a disturbance as well. We have make a mob? Yeah, we have. Oh, what are you thinking? Yeah, disturb would actually be the best way to do this. I did it as stirred up because because that's why McKinley was like confused by like oh, why would we mix a crowd? So maybe stirred up is better or disturbed is even better. Um, so yeah, we stir up the crowd. Um, oh, I guess it'd be turbine. Is it turbine turbine? Ooh, uh -oh. well, let me see. It's because I'm focusing on verbs, so I'm like not even paying. It's like I'm not doing color coding. This is not about noun declensions. Um, all right, so now we have our first singular, first plural, first redundant. Uh, legacy. Uh, see a pattern here, Mr. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's it's it Yeah, what is this? Okay, it's what is, it's is second it's, person plural? No, singular. It is a singular. Good. Good. It's, this is a super distinct ending. Unlike first plural and third singular spoiler, this one is super, super distinct. Uh, hopefully you wouldn't think that it's just a long I ending. I can almost see that happening. Again, that's a vocab thing a little bit where you kind of need to know the principal part that this is coming from. The Lego Legra Leggy Lexus. Again, this one's a little nasty because the stem for the, the third principal part is identical to the stem for the second principal part. Um, but as long as it's not getting third singular or first plural, we should be able to recognize that ending anywhere. So second, singular, perfect. It's very distinct. It's four letters. Uh, we've only ever had first plural for a to be four letters long. So this would be you have read, you have chosen. This doesn't make sense content-wise, but doesn't make sense grammar-wise. I still have, I have a friend who wants to make a lot of textbooks that none of the sentences make sense in terms of like telling story. So that it's like, it makes you be more aware of the grammar. You know what I mean? How like all of our sentences kind of like tell some kind of like story a little bit. Some of them are awkward enough where they almost count as, as what the sentence is. But like he wants it to where like they, they don't make any actual content sense. And so you just have to know the grammar really well. That actually makes sense. Yeah, well, actually makes a tiny bit of sense. But what happens when you start translating regular way? Like, well, it'd probably be awesome because you're like, now I'm applying grammar and I like I can use context clues to kind of like gloss over things and move more quickly. Because I'm like so good at just grammar and not like predicting what the thing is trying to say. What would Ganera fluminus leggy speed be? What game of Ganeris, anyone? Like, fine. Yeah, it's, it's sometimes origin, but for us, usually it's been kinder type. And then flumen is water. No, not water. Not water. Well, aqua. No, wait, that's not aqua. Specific kind of water. Uh, street. Yeah, river. So what would this be? Yeah, you have chosen. Uh, the types of river. I don't know what that means. How can you choose a type of river? I don't know. Like maybe if you're and playing a long one, and there's a short one. <laughs> yeah, that's a short oh, one. Hey, what? Yeah, if you're playing like one of the not like Sim City, but like something like that, like a civilization game where you're like, like creating. Oh, yeah, that's kind of a like fun a game car. where you get to build a bunch of houses and then you get to right. conquer people. And you get to choose types of river. I love that. <laughs> uh, I've never really played that game. Get that on my plate. Get rid of that prison game I have and get something better. Yes. So there's Ganymede yeah. Scanaris. It's a neuter third declension. That's why it's getting the neuter third declension ending there, the A. And Flumen Fluminus is uh, genitive. I mean, Fluminus. Anyway, second plural. So now y'all will always know second plural perfect, right? right? Maybe. Maybe. Um, McKinley, you were on a roll. You, uh, you knew the second singular. That virus was there. You knew the second singular, so now you should always know second singular. So it's gonna, how would you translate a second singular? Just you. You. Y'all, you what? You verb, you you verb. Yeah, just you verb. It can be have if you want, doesn't have to be. You verb. All right, fluke sit. What is fluke sit? I want. Obviously, this is what person number, Anna? Third person singular. Good, third person singular. That much is clear, and it's perfect too. And it's from fluo fluora, fluxi, or fluo fluora. Um, here we go. Uh, fluxi fluxum. So what letter makes it clear to us that this is perfect tense, uh-huh? IT, I just keep. Not only the IT, because the IT 
would show up in present. The present version of this would just be fluid. So I'm just going to go Jack. The X. So one of the things I mentioned is very common. Because the X shows up in the third principal part, not the other principal parts. Well, well, this third principal part is, and fourth, but we're, we're going to, that is the perfect stem, right? That's where we get the perfect stem from when we drop off the I. Well, what person of number is the third principal part already, McKinley? It's what person of number? It's the third person character. How it is there? Once we have the T, it becomes third person, but how it is in the dictionary entry, it's just like this guy. It's what, what, what person is this guy? First? Yeah. So this is first person singular present. This is first singular perfect. There's rhyme and reason to it. They're both first person. They're just of different tenses. Present, and from that we get imperfect in future. Perfect, from that we get pluperfect in future. So yeah, the X makes all the difference here. Otherwise, that IT ending is no different than the ending it gets in its present tense. Um, all right, what flumen in Romam would it be? Um, Anna, what do you think that would be? I've been dropping all the subjects, but here we actually do have a subject. It's not dropped. So the subject would actually be... Yeah, so the river, and in Rome or, right, into, uh, or even toward. Okay. We just learned that can't look confused as can be toward. Or can uh -huh. so the water was the downfall of Rome. Mm -hmm. I figured it out. And what river would this be, anyone? The, uh, no, the so the T? The Tiger. Euphrates. No, Tiger. that's Tiger. 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 I don't know that. That's Mesopotamia. That's over in Mesopotamia. This is, uh, uh, or kind of, this is the, Tigris. Tiger, tiger, tiger. Not tiger, but tiger. Yeah, Tigris is, that's not even totally Mesopotamia. That's like, uh, uh, it's like, it's the Indus, Indus River Valley is north of the Tigris and Euphrates. Tigris and Euphrates, that's where Iraq is. Okay. Maybe it's the Nile. Maybe the it's, Nile got through the ocean. It's Mesopotamia. And it went to Rome. So technically, Rome is just a test of. That river in Rome is just attached to the Nile, which is attached to Mesopotamia. So they're all connected in one. They are. You got to know rivers. They all flow in the Mediterranean. Oh, there's the Danube, the Rubicon, the Tiber, the Thames. I mean, the Thames does not make it. Except for the Colorado. Yeah, except for the Colorado. The Colorado right. Right. They all make it. <laughs> they all make it. Some of them are just like two oceans. But all, all, but all end up in the ocean, which That's means true. the ocean the is ocean? the connection point. Oh, theoretically, some things could. Never end up in one spot. Like these drop water just go all the way around and then oh. No, like water is water. I feel like all water like ends up everywhere at some point. I mean, does that make sense? Theoretically. Yeah. Theoretically. But I'm just saying because it makes logical sense. Because all rivers are connected, which means that they're all connected to the ocean. Because all rivers start in the ocean, I okay. think. So true. They give me one person number this way. The Dead Sea, the Dead Sea. No one cares about the Dead Sea. Again, you're on a roll last one. Oh, uh, that's second. Second okay. singular? Carl, Carl. Yeah, we're just adding an S to the end of the singular one. Uh, now, what verb is this from? Caro, Caro. Add a prefix to this one to make it sound like the English word. Prepare. Yeah, so this would translate to what? And you want it out loud? Yeah, y'all prepared. That's it. Y'all have prepared. You want to use have. Uh, so para parare, paravi, again, what is a single letter that makes us aware this is in the perfect system for sure? It's the V, yeah. So as I predicted, U, V, and X are, I'd say in like 80% of our perfect stems, but some of them don't get anything that really signifies to us as perfect. Why vocab is important. But yeah, so the stem is parav, and then we add these endings, but this ending, we wouldn't even need to like, Look at the dictionary entry. This should be very distinctly second plural perfect to us. What would quo libro cum paravistas be? Uh, so there's no cum here. How would we take a interrogative adjective like that? We would add the preposition of what. There's no cum. From the B. Yeah, like by which, and this is from libro liber. By which library? Now it's not library. Book. But we do have preposition. So it'll be with which book. Are these just, are you, are you prepared? Did you prepare? Did you have prepared? Prepare? Prepare? I don't know about did. Have you prepared? I like have better. Have you prepared? So I think this is a case where we need our helping verb. Or you could say you prepared for a book. You, uh, okay. okay. But that you prepared with which book. I guess that's okay. Fair and fair. Uh, no, it is, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But this is the way I would think of it. Did is okay. 
did is kind of the simple path to do, right? Yeah. It is. So did's okay. I like how it's better. Y'all y'all aren't wrong. Uh, okay. And then last but not least, we have the one apparently Jack couldn't quite remember. Mm, yeah. Third plural. Oh, Obviously yeah. third oh, plural. Um, but this one is weird. He sticks out like a sore thumb because all the other ones have I in it, and this one has E. Uh, Way to make everything complicated and flat. Right. And it probably reminds you of the future third person plural yeah. ending. That's why I didn't write down like on or on. Right. Yeah, it looks like just like normal future. Um, which, you know, air runs by itself means they will. So it's weird. They all. But this were, would mean what? They. All rich. Were, no, they were, 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 were three. Not, not, not passive. Huh? That's tomorrow. They have. Free. 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 Yeah, active. They <laughs> have freed or liberated. Um, they have liberated. Yeah, this doesn't. This would need a direct object. This doesn't really count. I mean, I guess you could have a sentence such as they liberated without a direct object, but that'd be weird. Um, again, V. V is the thing that tells us we're in the perfect system for sure, whether we know our ending is perfect or not. But maybe I can get used to that being a third person plural perfect ending. Is it a, they liberated, they free. What ablative shows up a lot of the time with this verb, anyone? Ablative of mean? Not Some really. Humans? No, like a means could show up, but more likely an ablative of you free people from things that they are being separated Sep from, right? Ablative of separation? Yes, the separation. What is uh, this one here? Roman. Romam coniaratis liberate. Roman. That's our pronouncing to use more. No, McKinley, we already know the subject is they. they so Rome can't be the subject. They, they have freed live. what? Yeah. Rome from itself. No, conspirators. The conspirators. conspirators, yeah. So just from us knowing our verb might often take an ablative of separation. When we see an ablative, we know it we're gonna use the preposition from. But that is kind of advanced if you think about it, right? This from is literally just coming out of the, the fact that we know the content. And basically the verbs that get out of the separation for us are libero, free, prohibeo to prohibit, and careo to lack. Those are the big out of the separation verbs you get for now. But you also like, so if you were to say they liberate Rome from conspiracy, it's a little clunky. So when you say they freed Rome of conspiracy, um, like they freed them of conspiracy. I don't know if I totally, I, I kind of hear you thinking that it's clunky to say from conspirators. But just saying they liberated Rome from conspirators is just like, yeah, it just seems a bit more, like if you say they freed Rome of conspirators, like they were freed of them, like they were taking off their land. That is the way that we often would probably say that it's just in English if you weren't coming from a Latin or like starting point. So yeah, like idiomatically, that's like fine. It's like technically the same thing. Yeah, it's just like how they is from or about, but there are times where they, and later in Spanish, our principle becomes of, and it's like it's kind of okay as of, and then so from here, like as opposed to from, like it's supposed to be from, but yeah, and that, that's the case that Jack was mentioning where like this wouldn't be the preposition anyway, it'd be more like of, um, which is usually from, but then of is also, well, what, what, what preposition that is from definitely becomes uh, of sometimes. Anyway. I think you can write out this. Yeah, like three all of the soldiers, you use X. So yeah, there is some kind of weird connection between the prepositions from and of and about and around. They're all kind of like the same family of, of, of idea. Um, yeah. So of is okay. Uh, Darn you. And then when Correo shows up and you lack things with Correo, usually you're just you're just lacking albums of separation. There is no direct object. But this is a sentence where we're like separating a direct object from an album of separation. All right, so those, uh, oh, and then, okay, what happens now? So that's, they have liberated Rome from conspirators. What changed now? Liberaverant. What is happening there? Oh, oh, blue purpose. Now it's blue purpose. We're not going to dwell on all the blue purpose. That'd be ridiculous. So this would be, so just they had, so that's the one difference between blue purpose and purpose, you just had instead of have or has. Then what would this one be? We had. No, it's first singular. Not first plural. We. I, I had, I had, had liberated Rome. And then you had liberated Rome, it had liberated Rome, etc. Don't even worry about 
like what all the innings look like, just be able to pick out the ERA. Like, honestly, I mean, the innings after that, they're very self-explanatory. This is a little weird. But if you can just pick out the ERA, it doesn't even matter that you're recognizing the rest of the ending. Like, that should just scream out to you, like, hey, I'm too perfect without the helping verb had. And that's how you do too perfect. We're not going to look at future perfect because it barely shows up. And that's just ERO or ERI or ERU. I owe you. I owe you the future test. So there we go. That is the food perfect. I mean, food perfect is more uniform than perfect. They're more standard, so they're actually easier to identify than perfect. Perfect's way weirder than food perfect and future perfect, which seems like it wouldn't be the case. So y'all know perfect and food perfect forever now? Are we sure? Yeah. Any questions? Concerns? That's like a weird snow where like, yeah, it looks like it's never going to accumulate. And like, if anything, it almost just seems like like cold rain or something. Um, this reminds me so much of January because it's always wet. Huh? Like, yeah. Like, literally acid I know, like, all, like, leave it to humans to create a situation where we have acid on the sky. Uh, here are certain sports. We already kind of talked about these, but there they are. Hopefully y'all can just like do all of certain sports tomorrow. And then look at the green ones and do fifth, and I'll give you the sort of Damocles for the rest of class. Uh-huh. Uh, can I get the, I still, I still bought the athletes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I still have the Good Infinity time. Gauntlet in my toolbox for Jeopardy, so I, I should be able to use that Infinity Gauntlet, too. Your, your Jeopardy team just always has Infinity Gauntlet? Yeah, I um, got it, so. What I was, was and then they just wanted to buy the Infinity Gauntlet, okay. and we barely got nothing five hundred points. We got one question right, and then they were like, we're buying an infinity gauntlet. I was like, no! I remember that day. I have three translations for us to do real quick, um, but I'm maybe we'll just do two. I also wanted to do the last one. I should have put that one first. V-days. What is V-days? That's our verb. I don't know why it's the first sentence. I'm the first word in the sentence. Fines. And who lives? And what tense did you say, Anna? Viva vibra. So this A is actually telling us this is not present tense, but... It is future action. So you will live, uh, what? Something about my guards? What is oppressive? What kind of part of something is it? Yeah, yeah. Basically just you will live suppressed by my guards. Or like having been suppressed. We don't really even need to say having been. We can just say suppressed. If you treat uh, perfect passive participles, just like adjectives basically, that's great. That's fine actually. Ili altum tendente modus dextra salutum etebant. We have two participles here. What are the two participles anyway? Something about those men, however. Tendente is what kind of participle, Ali? And then good, and then what's the other one? Well, wait, what is the other one? What are we talking about? Oh, I think I left out a word. Oh, I'm thinking of the next one. There's only one here, sorry. Um, Tendentes is present active. So what, those men, however, doing what? Oh, I just gave away the answer. Stretching their right hand. Stretching their right hand, yeah. Um, uh, we're seeking a, uh, solid salutes can be help, but here it must be greeting, I think. They're, they're describing someone doing a Roman salute. Here's the one that I was thinking of just then. Uh, Suchi, under the verb, we don't have it, to thirst. Suchi, right, to thirst. Um, what are the particles here? Tantalus, he's that guy, right? He's Agamemnon's, like, grandfather. Tantalus Sitian. Huh? It looks like sitting, but that's uh Cedo Cedra. This is a verb we don't have any different. So yeah, Tantalus thirsting. Uh, desiring. What's desiring? What's desiring or desired? What's desiring? Water from a river from a river. Just he was desiring a river. The river. And the river. What was the river doing? Fleeing. Fleeing from his mouth. Yes. And oh, I'm sorry. He was desiring to touch the river fleeing from his mouth. Okay. I kind of butchered that. But we have two present active participles there, right? The only thing that tells us that is like in, F, and in, P. I know that seems kind of hard, but that's what tells yeah, us that. He's trying to get, y'all don't remember Pantelis? No. His, his punishment for, what was it? It, yeah, he was trying to feed his son to the gods for some reason, because that's an awful thing to trick people into doing. Um, and so they <laughs> trick him by, he's stuck in this river. When he reaches, yeah, when he reaches for the grapes, they recede. When he reaches for the water, the water drains. 
And so, uh, yeah, he was he, Angel is thirsting, but desiring to touch the rivers, fleeing from his mouth. So remember, these particles are basically like adjectives. They sound weird, but it's like Angelus, who was thirsting in the rivers, which were fleeing. They're just kind of fast ways of saying something is verbing. Is that in Dante? I don't know. I don't think so. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, him, like, along with people like Sisyphus, the guy rolling up the, the, the boulder, um, Prometheus getting his liver fucked out. Well, some people are just perpetually punished in part There was somebody that got punished because they gambled too much. Every time they throw the knife, they go out the back and they have vacation. Oh, weird. I don't know that one. The Ixion just grabs the wheel and spins. I don't even know what he did. Well, what did he do? Why does that really have to make anything? Oh my god, we're so not gonna pay attention. So I like, get the venting out now, okay? Why? I don't know because I don't want to hear it. Oh my god, you guys. <laughs> okay. You know, you're amazing, but like, come on, my bro. Are you talking to me? Huh? You're talking to me? Yeah. You're... How was your weekend? It was okay. It's okay. So you came back? No, it's like it's still okay, but, oh. but you're coming in hot. How was your weekend? It was amazing. Good. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello. Good. Good. You have extra computers. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Okay. Um, we're going to probably start calling you out so, so you know like, if someone's on the missing. Um, yeah. Because we had 11, and it turned out I don't even, I need, I think it's like seven at this point. Like, seven, well, and then there's seven. like, there's over 20. Yeah, I think it's like 20. Is it locked? It is locked, there's a code. Do you have? Yeah, I don't have the code, but it's really easy. Okay. It's just four numbers. The post it. Here, you want to get it? Here. I say you can just write it on here. Cool. Um, um, so I might snack some in the morning or something, but just so you know. Sure. So you just write those four numbers and you have to press the enter, and then you just stop. Right. Thank you. Awesome. How's it going with the kids that are using? That's working really well, yeah. They're just using the Teams now, the Microsoft Teams. Yeah. Okay. No. 